CoLab is great. It's going to be great for Atlanta because it's so open in terms of its architecture and the way that it's interdisciplinary, bringing a lot of minds, not only from Atlanta and the Atlanta region, but from around the country and around the world, to talk about really the issues that are important, uh, like education, like innovation, bringing manufacturing back to the United States so we can be a worldwide leader. Manufacturing is so important to our GDP, and to our success as a nation, and even to our national security. And none of that happens without great employees. We've got to have employees that are treated right, that are brought into corporations right, and we need to have all our focus really on labor at the end of the day, because that's what makes a great company, that's what makes a great nation. I'm excited that the CoLab Summit is in the city of Atlanta today because cities are where hope meets the street. And at the end of the day, whenever you get together a group of extraordinarily talented individuals who get to share ideas and come out of their silos, the city of Atlanta is going to be propelled forward at a faster rate. And in a world with a dynamic economy that is ever-changing, if you want to not just um, be average or mediocre, you genuinely do have to stay ahead of the curve. You genuinely do have to be in the future business. So what CoLab is about and what today represents is the city of Atlanta, the region and the state being in the future business. Think about the worlds that our kids are gonna enter. Think about all of the information that they're gonna have at their fingertips, all of the people that they're gonna be able to interact with. It's an overwhelming thing when you think about it. I love this quote by Michael Wesch. You know, we live now in a world marked by ubiquitous computing, ubiquitous information, and ubiquitous networks at unlimited speed about everything everywhere from anywhere on all kinds of devices that make it ridiculously easy to connect, organize, share, collect, collaborate, and publish. And I would ask you to raise your hands right now if your kids' schools or the schools that you work in sound like that. Hardly anyone. Hardly anyone. But yet, if we have access and if we know what to do with it, that is a powerful, powerful change when it comes to the way we can learn and the way we can connect. It's education that we depend upon to cultivate the sensibilities, the talents, the abilities, the outlook, the aptitudes on which we all depend, uh, both our children, ourselves. It's the way in which we pass on the, our traditions and our histories. It's the way we engage in the present and it's how we prepare for the future. And at the moment, we have an education system. I say we because it's not just in America. It's, it's a global issue, as Etienne pointed out that is seriously um, divorced from the way the world is actually functioning and the lives our children are actually leading. And there are efforts happening all around the world to reform education, to improve the current model. My view, and I think you'll hear from a lot of speakers here uh, during the conversations uh, tomorrow and in the labs, is that the current system doesn't need to be tweaked or improved, it needs to be replaced. It needs to be transformed into something else. I can beat the private sector because we do cool stuff. If you're leading a government, you're not working on one problem that relates to uh, engineering or mechanics. One day you're working on trying to build a stadium. The next day you're working on trying to uh, clean the city. The next day you're trying to reduce school violence. The next day you're working on obesity in the school. If you are a highly talented, motivated individual, not for your own whole life, but for a part of your life, when you look out at a city and you're building an international terminal, um, you don't do that in most public sector jobs. People who have had good lives want to give back. They may not want to do it for 10 years, but they'll do it for two and four years. And if you are a smart leader, you'll come in and you'll take whatever they give you. My COO took a seven-figure pay cut to come and work for the city of Atlanta. Seven-figure pay cut. And he would tell you that he had more, job, more fun at the job that he used to have than he does right now. But that helps me go and get other folks. Right? So if I'm going out and I'm recruiting a young, young, young up-and-comer to come and help me, um, I can send him to talk to some of the folks who made that decision. And then it also drives the, the, the CEO community. I think that when you look at the reforms that we've made in the city of Atlanta, they're largely because CEOs, you guys love results. So if you open the doors and let them verify and look under the hood that what you're saying is true, then your CEOs come along and then things change radically. Because once the private sector believes, things aren't the same. I 
I believe in going out, recruiting the absolute best, and freeing them. And if you look at my team, uh, the turnover in my administration in the four years that I have been leading the city at the top level um, is minimal. And I think that that's why uh, I'm fortunate enough to be on your stage uh, and not have tomatoes being thrown. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sir Ken Robinson, and you're logged on to www.famemagazine.com. Don't forget the dash.